This is one of my absolute favorite presentations because there's so much in it you wouldn't believe. So an ancient elixir rediscovered, let's just take a look. The elixir of choice is what I call it. And I like to go through these because it reminds me of how much I need this particular liquid. Because it makes muscles more flexible, invigorates mind and body, sharpens the intellect. There's a good one for us. Lowers blood pressure, helps remove toxins from the body, clears up bladder problems, aids digestion, lubricates the body, rebuilds cartilage, regulates body temperature, keeps bowels regular, and relieves depression. And if any of us think that we don't need this, we should think again. It covers over almost two-thirds of the Earth's surface. And even in the clouds you'll see in the sky, this liquid is right there, like a forgotten liquid miracle. And scientists call it H2O. But most of us know it as W-A-T-E-R, water. And it is a fantastic liquid. This is a place in uh, Alberta, Mount Edith Cavell. And Jeannie and I used to hike there quite a bit when we lived in Alberta. Notice all the snow on the mountainside. That's all water. Notice the water in the streams, all water. And how much water do those trees hold? Tremendous amounts of water. You can't believe it. If you really start to search, you see that God had water come in first, didn't he? Let there be water, and let there be waters above the waters. And you can see why water is a major compound of every single living substance on the earth. Even in these seeds, you'll see, just as a tiny seed in the ground needs water to help it germinate, so do new cells in the body. Tissues that are repairing and building new cells need water to begin, maintain, and finish the process. So it's important all the way along in every single function of the human body. And as we look at something interesting, people always say to me, well, I kind of get enough liquid. You know, I have one or two cups of coffee every day. That, that's, that's a, that counts, doesn't it? Well, actually, no. If you want to really think about it and look at it scientifically, if the body were to use the water contained in one cup of coffee, and it doesn't, but if it was, it would take as much as two cups of water to process the toxic ingredients out of the coffee before it could get to just the water content. And indeed, that's what the body does. It spends two cups of water to process the toxins of the coffee out of the system. So if anybody has a cup of coffee, they're automatically two cups short of this wonderful liquid that the body needs. Now here's some interesting water facts that, uh, first of all, the human body, approximately 70% water. That's quite a bit, isn't it? You never think of water when you're looking at hands and hair and things. You never think that that's mostly water, do you? Well, it is. Now, take a look at this. Whether it's female muscle or whether it's male muscle, it's approximately 75% water. And uh, that's a lot to think about because if you're exercising a good amount, you're going to need more water with your exercise. And if you take a look at bones, even bones, though many people don't think about it in this light, bones are approximately 25% water. Now these are all according to statistics, standards set somewhere. Now we take a look at the blood. Blood is approximately 82% water. You never think of it like that though, do you? You think blood is blood. 82% water. Now take a look at that most marvelous of all instruments. Well, the one computer I talked about last night, the human brain, approximately 85% water. Isn't that beautiful? Water, 85% water. Uh, these stats were taken from Tammy Darling's article, Waterworks, Vibrant Life Magazine, January 2001. I said to myself, where do we get these statistics? Because she got them from somewhere else. As I searched the statistics, Guess where they get those measurements from? Looking at a little baby. You notice how supple babies are? Easily, you know, move around and turn and, and lots of energy. But the truth of the matter is that these percentages are not the average percentages of the average human being. If they were, you wouldn't have as much depression as you see. You wouldn't have as much muscle aches as you see. You wouldn't have as much fibromyalgia and all kinds of things happening in the system if the system was as wet 
as these statistics say they are. But if you measure that perfect little baby, you're going to find some perfect little statistics. But we can't apply them to human beings. Doesn't come as easy. Now, if we take a look at the human organs, water in the system, every organ of the body only works properly if it receives enough water. Secondly, each organ will regulate its substance and production according to how much water is available for the task. And third, your brain sets the production standards for each organ according to how much water is available for the work. Let's put that in plain, simple language. And that is, your brain monitors all the water that's available for functioning your body in your body and it allocates water to different areas where it, it feels it needs the water to be. So well not only feels the water need, where it feels the water needs to be but where the water actually needs to be. So if there's not enough water to perform one function of the body the brain will often take water from another area and go to the area that needs the water immediately. Um, water will be taken from the bowel and from the blood, for instance, to service the more vital areas of the body if there is not enough water to service all areas at the same time. And I'd like to reiterate that. That is, if there's not enough water to service all the areas at the same time. And so if you're water deficient, then your body can't function 100%. It has to diminish its functions so the brain can allocate water to the organs that need it the most. Now this man is suffering from high blood pressure because of lack of water. But have you ever heard of the disease Satan toilettosis? How many have heard of that? You haven't heard of that? Well, it's better known as constipation. And this fellow is having a really hard time, as you can see. He's been there a while. <laughs> Things are just not functioning. Anybody ever had those kind of problems? Oh yes, very common. In fact, one of the most common things in North America, one of the most common over-the-counter uh, drug medications are uh, things for constipation. Many are living in violation of the laws of health, Ellen White states, and are ignorant of the relation their habits of eating, drinking, and working sustain to their health. They will not arouse to their true condition until nature protests against the abuses she is suffering by aches and pains in the system. This is scientifically verified these days too. If, even then, the sufferers would only commence the work right and would resort to the simple means they have neglected, that is, the use of water and proper diet, nature would have just the help she requires and which she ought to have had long before. If this course is pursued, the patient will generally recover without being debilitated. You see, water. Water is such an essential. Oftentimes, the feeling of hunger is misinterpreted. It's actually the body saying, I need water. Give me water. More H2O. Now, it's, uh, if you have drafts of clear hot water taken before eating, that's half a quart more or less, two cups, will never do any harm, but will rather be productive of good because it gets the stomach ready to receive food. If there's enough water in the stomach about 20 minutes before a meal and you're thinking about that meal, your pancreas will produce bicarbonate which will be placed into the stomach and this will neutralize acids the stomach is producing, preventing things like ulcers stomach pains during digestion. Isn't that interesting? So that's all what water does. Water helps to signal the brain to alert other organs that processes need to be taking place. And if there is enough water, then those organs will actually go to working better. So our digestion becomes better, our ability to move comes, becomes better, our ability to think becomes more clear. And uh, <laughs> It's just, it's funny to think about, but if you were thirsty, would you take an aspirin? Would you believe that many people do? Yeah, many people, when they're thirsty, they take an aspirin. And why do you think I'd say such a thing? Sounds outlandish, doesn't it? But it's actually quite true. Show you what I mean. In the amphibian species, histamine overproduces when they become dehydrated. Histamine. Now what's important about that? 
When they are well hydrated, histamine levels are very, very low. If you take that creature out of the water, the histamine levels are just really low. But if it stays out of the water a long time, the histamine levels rise and become very pronounced. And you have to say to yourself, well, why is that? How many have taken antihistamines? How many have heard antihistamines? Something to get rid of the histamine. My question is, why is the histamine there to begin with? That's what we need to deal with. And as we see with the amphibian species, that's the problem taking place. Look at this. In the human being, histamine can create pain when it comes across pain-sensing nerves in the body. Also, you remember that little frog? Don't forget it. Thus, when a person has chronic pain, it may mean that their body is dehydrated. Just like that little amphibian coming out of the water, when it's, when the, when it's dehydrated, the, 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 the histamine rises in its levels. It's the same with the human being. Dehydration can produce high histamine levels, which, when it comes across pain-sensing nerves, can cause pain in the system. In case of shortage of water in our house, we try to prioritize the use of water for essential purposes. Similarly, when the body receives less water than it needs, histamine initiates a system of water regulation. Histamine directs some neurotransmitters to operate subsystems to regulate water intake. What a brilliant machine this is, you know? It knows how to live. It seems to me that every symptom your body produces is an effort to make itself right. It's an effort to repair the wrong that we do. And so the ratio of the water content in and outside the cells of the various organs is very important. When the body does not receive sufficient amounts of water, or when the cells cannot hold water, Water content in the cells decreases. Did you notice that? When the cells cannot hold water. Have you ever noticed people who drink water and they have to run to the bathroom right away? You ever wonder why that happens? Could be something that the cells cannot hold water. We're going to show you today how to make your cells so they will hold water and so that you will begin to look younger. How does that sound? Are you glad you came? <laughs> Everybody would like to look younger. You know, there's two things that, that people seek on this earth. As a rule, human beings, we seek to first be happy. And secondly, we try to avoid death as much as possible. And this fallen world will not accommodate success in either one of those goals. Did you know that? Your happiness can only be found when you're healthy, which would mean that you're walking within the laws of life, the laws of God, and when you realize that what this earth offers in the grave is nothing, because that's not death. That's asleep. And the Lord's going to take care of that when he comes. So, important point. Since the water content in each cell plays a vital role in maintaining its normal function, Inadequate water can lead to loss of some functions resulting in specific symptoms. That's kind of important. Products manufactured in the brain cells are transported on waterways to their destination in the nerve endings for use in the transmission of messages. So if there's not enough water for the brain to function properly, all of a sudden motor skills start to disappear. Can't walk straight, can't think straight. Having a problem enjoying food, having a problem sleeping. And I'm not saying water is the, lack of water is the complete cause of all these, but it's a major contributor to all of these things. Major contributor. So, the clinical signs of dehydration are thus. Depression, pain, fatigue, dry mouth, strong, dark yellow urine, constipation, asthma, allergies, etc., etc., etc. We've had so many people come to the office that have had allergies, especially the time of year when the spring is coming. And when we put them on a regimen which included good, good amounts of water and leather liquids, 
those people came back and said, I had no allergies this year. Isn't that amazing? Years of testing, you're allergic to this, and you're allergic to this, and this, and this, and this. But nobody ever said, why don't you just drink water? Why don't you just drink water? Do you know something? Health is so simple to have if you know the simple rules. These are laws of life designed so that the six-year-old can understand you got to drink your water, you got to eat your vegetables, you got to eat your fruits, eat some nice grains, get some exercise. You don't have to go to university to know those things and put them into practice. And you don't have to go to university to be well. You just have to obey the simple little laws of life. That sounds too easy, doesn't it? It really does. But it's actually very true. Now, how much water, how much liquid does the actual human body need? And you'll hear everything from well, six cups a day to eight, ten cups a day, so on and so forth. About one ounce of water slash juice for every two pounds of body weight. And you may say, why did you say water slash juice? How come you said that? Have you ever researched anywhere to see why it is we're supposed to have eight cups of water a day? Has anybody done that? Do you know that I question everything? Absolutely everything. I said, who said that? Because I couldn't find it anywhere in the spirit of prophecy. I couldn't find it in the Bible. But you know where I did find it finally? I found it in the, uh, <laughs> the Academy of Sciences National Research Council, 1945. And they discovered that a suitable allowance of water for adults is 2.5 liters daily in most instances. And that became the rule of thumb. That's where it came from. Now you see, I've discovered also, it's not just water, as we know it, that the body needs. It's something else. And you're going to learn what that is. So now we need two kinds of liquid in the body. You need drinking water, which is shown in this clear glass right here, and you need a good amount of that in the day to keep your body functioning. In fact, when you get up first thing in the morning, a good quart of that water is great. But we need also organic water. I call it organic water. But what, do you, what, what really is it? Can you tell me? What are, what's she drinking? She's drinking. These are representing juices from all of these foods. That's what the body is. Remember the first night I said the human body is a juicing machine? That's what it's seeking. That's what it's going after. It wants to have the liquids coming in, along with the water. Drink your spinach. You ever heard of that before? Drink your carrots. You know, <laughs> it's a good idea. I want to show you two skin cells here. This is a skin cell, which is uh, actually, I'll show you some, get my little arrow going here, my little cursor, if I can find it. Is it on here today? Oh, hey, there it is. Look at that. Came out of the corner. Right over here. You see, just, just slow down. It's a Ferrari. <laughs> Whoa, <laughs> i got to find out where the brakes are. This is right here. You see where that arrow is? That's, that's holes in the cellular wall. And as you look up here, you can see a number of them. Oh, don't, just slow down. Just, just right there. Just, just, come on. Can you see them? All around that periphery, there are holes. There are breakages in it. So if this person drinks water, that cell can't hold water very well if the water got to it. So what's the cell going to do? It's going to leak out like a sieve. But notice the healthy cell. Do you see a difference? Isn't that interesting? And so here we see there are no peripheries broken on this cell. So it holds water. The one in the bottom here on the left, that's going to show aged looking skin. Age marks what they call liver spots, and so on and so forth. But this skin up in the top right, that's going to be clear, healthy skin. Why? It's made properly, and it's holding water very well. And if it holds the water really good, that means the cellular function is going to be 100%, because it needs water for every single function. It'll receive messages from the brain very well. It will send messages to different tissues very well. It'll receive and send extremely well, as a matter of fact. So, I guess I better find my right button again. Here's a person who, there's before and there's after, left and right. You notice the difference? 
Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? That's from eating the right diet and lifestyle. Now, I use this picture as an illustration. This isn't the hand of somebody who came to the center. This is the hand of somebody who was doing things right. But I've had people come to the center, and why I started this was because they'd say to me, this one man, I never forget him, he was about 60 years old, and he said, uh, you know, I noticed something different when I started my exercising, and he'd been doing this for about six months. He said, I noticed something different. Changes are taking place in me. And his wife was beside him saying, tell him, tell him, show him, she said. So he stuck out his hands and he says, all my age spots disappeared. Whoa. Yeah, age spots. And he said, I had uh, these little tiny moles on my neck and they fell off. I said, isn't that interesting? He says, yeah. I said, now, are you doing a lot of juicing? He said, oh, yeah. I have about a quart and a half to two quarts a day of fresh juices, mostly greens. And you're going to see how exciting it is to get those greens in. But isn't that amazing? And that became a common thing. People began to see the spots on their hands disappear. Their skin began to come, become really nice. The cornified layer was clear and clean. And we have a special program on, on how to get your skin beautiful. We don't have it all together to present this, in these lectures, but we're hoping to have it all together for another series to come. Okay? Fair enough, you can only do so much in so much time, right? But through the experimentation we're able to do with people that come into our office and see the actual results taking place in their lives, then we have experiences which can benefit every single soul. That's good, isn't it? And you know, if you follow this program, within a year, you could look 10 to 15 years younger and feel even younger than that. Your energy comes back, you feel vibrant, your eyesight returns, everything starts going good. Hard to believe, but it's actually true. And so, one of the best foods to feed your skin is apricots. Apricots help the cellular structures and the whole body to hold water. You may say, oh, I get edema and I, I, you know, I don't want to hold water. Yes, you do. The edema shows your cellular structures are not functioning properly. Something's wrong. Something that really helps to get rid of the swelling of edema is not to take a diuretic of any kind, but if you ate bananas and raisins just for a couple of days, that's your food, bananas and raisins. When it's breakfast, bananas and raisins. When it's lunch, bananas and raisins. When it's supper, bananas and raisins. It may sound like I'm treating you like idiots, but I'll tell you what. That is exactly how I need to speak it because we get so many phone calls from people that <laughs> repeat instructions that we never gave. So I, I try to make it really, really clear. Breakfast, lunch, supper, bananas and raisins. Two days. Watch the edema go right down. And that's because the body becomes hydrated, the cellular structures start to work really good. Food is your medicine. If anyone doesn't understand food, they cannot understand disease. It is actually impossible. Boy, there's so much I could share with you. Now, Jeannie talked about organic things. You notice these apricots, these dried ones in the front? Those are organic, sun-dried apricots. Do they look delicious? Only to the experienced tongue. <laughs> they taste incredibly fantastic. These ones are nice fresh ones and then even fresher ones in the back there, but those are beautiful and great for your skin. You know, have to have to have four to, to four or five of these a day for a little while and watch your, your skin start to take on a whole new texture. They're fantastic. Apricots for your skin. You'll find a lot of these skin creams have apricot concentrate in them too. They're very good for your skin. So, of all these foods, you tell me, from apples, lettuce, watermelon, which one has the most water? Watermelon. Watermelon. Everybody always says watermelon. Ounce for ounce, lettuce contains the most water. Yeah. All these animals in nature, have you noticed how they eat? Do they eat watermelon? Are they eating lots of living greens? you're going to see how much, how much nutrition there is in that living green. The amount of water in greens is incredible. And that's why those animals, you don't see them always drinking, drinking, drinking. No, they're eating, eating, eating. And if the grass is nice and moist, they're getting lots of moisture. And occasionally, you'll see them going to drink water because you need both. Okay, very important. You need both. 
So now I'm going to go to the work of Dr. Emile Berge. He was a uh, Swiss scientist back in the 1930s. And this doctor, he discovered some great things about chlorophyll, which is a liquid that we need. Chlorophyll is incredible. As he tried different experiments on his patients, he discovered things like this. It was helpful in improving various anemic conditions, improving the action of the heart, reducing abnormally high blood pressure, and improving one's overall health. Something so simple as chlorophyll. To take it a little step further, I'm going to show you inside a leaf. I've magnified these things, blown them up, so you're going to see where the actual chlorophyll lives in the plant. These are like little suburbs where the chloroplasts are living. And we're getting closer in the neighborhood right now, and you're going to see as we enter this little area in through here, here is a chloroplast, and it's got all kinds, uh, it's actually a chloroplast unit. And now you've seen a chloroplast. You notice the little cellular structures inside the chloroplast? That's your chlorophyll. Does it look familiar to anybody? A nurse, maybe, who's taken biology. A doctor who's taken biology. Anybody who does blood work. Oh, thank you very much. Well spoken. If you just take a really close look, this is almost identical to red blood cells. In fact, if a person was to take fresh squeezed chlorophyll, about a quart of chlorophyll, and I said fresh squeezed, that will take you approximately 8 to 10 pounds of greens to produce it, depending on how much moisture there is in the greens if they haven't been become too dehydrated. And you add enough fresh squeezed, fresh pressed apple to that to make it taste good. If you drank that for your supper meal, just sipped on it, swished it around in your mouth and swallowed it down, by the time morning came, you will have had a blood transfusion. Yeah. Yeah. That's because the central atom in, in chlorophyll is magnesium. The central atom of hemoglobin is iron. Iron. Isn't that interesting? So the body turns this into actual blood. The chlorophyll changed into blood. A person wouldn't need a blood transfusion if they just try that. I suggested to hospitals, doctors, what's it going to do? Kill somebody? No. But just try it and see what their blood's like in the morning if you don't believe me. Just try it. Dr. Bernard Jensen in the 1950s did a really fantastic experiment. He took rats in his laboratory, and we have where this information is if anybody wants to get a hold of it. But I studied this, what he, what he found. He took the rats, drained their blood, and filled them with chlorophyll. I think he put 90% of the blood out and filled them with chlorophyll. Guess what happened to the rats? They didn't turn green, but they lived. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? You know, <laughs> <laughs> it's fascinating. How many greens do we get in a day? How much green? If you notice in the beginning, God said, and I've given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed, to you it shall be for meat. I'm suggesting we need more greens. Lots of greens. They call this the blue planet, but that's a big mistake. If you walk outside here, what color do you see the most of? Green. What does that tell you? A loving creator says, children, I made you to have greens. And when you see the structures of the chlorophyll, that's incredible. So the darker green a plant is, the more chlorophyll it has. Does that make sense to you? The more chlorophyll, the more sunlight it receives, the more chlorophyll it's going to have. So this pale, mamby-pamby lettuce you see in the grocery store, that hasn't got anything in it. Mind you, the iceberg lettuce does have silicon, and silicon is good for the skin. So you can have some of that, just mix it in with your kale, or dark romaine, things like that. Beautiful things, dark green baby spinach. Beautiful plants, and you'll get lots and lots of moisture. Just some interesting little things. Also, the chlorophyll molecule bears a striking resemblance to hemoglobin, the red pigment in human blood. The red blood pigment is a web of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen atoms grouped around a single atom of iron. Chlorophyll is a similar web of the same atoms, except that its centerpiece is a single atom of magnesium. So that's, a, I, I reiterated the topic, I guess, the subject matter for you. Now, some of Dr. Bernard Jensen's discoveries were these. 
And by the way, Dr. Bernard Jensen studied under Dr. John Harvey Kellogg. Isn't that amazing how many things go back to, to the old Adventist message? I just love it. It builds a high blood count. You can see why I'm saying a transfusion takes place. Look at all these things. It provides iron to the organs, counteracts toxins eaten, improves anemic conditions, cleans and deodorizes bowel tissues, helps purify the liver, feeds iron to the heart, feeds iron to the heart. Exciting stuff. Regulates menstruation. Aids hemophilia conditions, improves blood sugar problems. Aids, that means like anybody who's a diabetic, try it. You like it. It works. It aids hemophilia conditions, improves blood sugar levels, aids in asthma improvement because it takes mucus out of the lungs. Usually, in most cases of asthma, it's a water deficiency. And the mucus that's there is there because the body's trying to keep the cellular structures in the lungs moist. And so mucus develops and the person can't breathe as much, but I tell you what, not breathing with the mucus in your lungs is better than having the lungs dry out. Okay? So that's what, you, that's what it really helps with. So it also increases the iron content in mother's milk, improves mother's milk production, and there's more. Helps sores heal faster, eliminates body odors, resists bacteria in wounds. You can put it on a wound. Imagine that. Cleanses cleans tooth and gum structure in pyrrhea, improves nasal drip, eliminates bad breath, relieves sore throat, benefits inflamed tonsils, soothes ulcer tissues, soothes painful hemorrhoids and piles, aids mucus discharges. Anybody has post-nasal drip or any of that? Lots of chlorophyll. Benefits okay. It uh, revitalizes vascular muscular. Pardon me. It revitalizes vascular system in the legs. It improves varicose veins. Remember what I shared with you on the exercise. It improves. It helps the body to rebuild these structures. It reduces pain caused by inflammation. And there's lots more. It's almost that snake oil salesman's favorite thing. Got some chlorophyll? Get it here. And it's available just about everywhere, chlorophyll. So, organic minerals versus inorganic minerals. In the chlorophyll, it's organic minerals when you fresh press it. <clears throat> if you heat it, what's going to happen to the enzymes? They die. And you get what's called inorganic. So I wanted to share this with you. There are two types of minerals, organic and inorganic. Human physiology has a biological affinity for organic minerals. That means they're living. Most organic minerals for our body functions come from dietary plant foods. A growing plant converts the inorganic minerals from the soils to a useful organic mineral. When an organic mineral from a plant food enters the stomach, it must attach itself to a specific protein molecule, it's called chelation, in order to be absorbed. Then it gains access to the tissue sites where it is needed. Once a plant mineral is divested within the body, it is utilized as a coenzyme for composing body fluids, forming blood and bone cells, and the maintaining of healthy nerve transmission. Kind of exciting stuff, isn't it? So simple. Where do you get your minerals from? Food. Living food. Nice chlorophyll. Without a healthy organic mineral balance inside, and outside the cells of muscle, blood, and bone substructures, the body will begin to spasm, twitch, and cramp. Anybody experienced any of those things? Now you know why. Something wrong. Eventually deteriorating to a full rigor complex or complete failure, or both. Dr. William Meisner, PhD. I've appreciated his research because it shows a lot about what's going on in the human body. The average human body processes about 40,000 cups of liquid every day through the most efficient recycling system in the world and only needs to replace about 8 to 10 cups of that liquid. That's amazing, isn't it? Did you ever think about that's how much fluid is going through your kidneys, your body's processing things throughout the day? It is an enormously complicated system, but yet requires just simple little looking after in order for your body to benefit and be a great benefit to you. 
So does it matter what type of water I drink? I can't tell you how many times we get that question. Does it matter what type of water I drink? Well, we'll take a look at some things here. What is the best water for drinking? I consider distilled water the best water for drinking. But doesn't distilled water leach minerals from your body? Has anybody ever heard that before? Well, it's true, and it's untrue at the same time, because it's an incomplete statement. Yes, the distilled water will leach, not leach minerals, but will carry minerals from the body. If you examine the urine of a person who's drinking a lot of distilled water, you'll notice that they may find mineral content in the urine. But if you check this mineral content, you'll find the minerals are inorganic. The body was trying to get rid of them. I'll give you an example. People have come to us who've been drinking well water and they had aches in their joints, arthritic type of conditions. When we get them off the well water, off the mineral water, and onto distilled water, guess what disappears? The pains. The pains go. Guess what comes out in the urine? All the inorganic minerals which were being deposited in and around the joints. That's kind of amazing, isn't it? And when they go back on the well water or back on the mineral water, guess what returns? The aches and pains. So it is absolutely incredibly good. Am I saying it's the only kind of water we can drink? No, not at all. But I consider it the best for the human body. I'm going to show you why I do that. This is from... Uh, Dr. Muling, 1994, pure water works now, it's time for action. Distilled pure water will not conduct electricity when only two parts per million inorganic minerals or less are present. Water with five parts inorganic content per million parts water or more will conduct electricity, completing a simple circuit and lighting a tester bulb. The higher the inorganic content is in a per million count, the less effectively water transmits organic minerals to tissue sites. That is very important. Because it is transporting the nutrients to these tissue sites, which enables the body to get rid of the things it doesn't want. So bottled water, tap water, reverse osmosis filtered water, and carbon block filtered water will conduct electricity substantiating that each one is not the best carrier for the mineral transport and mineral absorption. Do you see? That's logical. That's conclusive. It works very well. The higher the inorganic content is in a per million count, the less effectively water transmits organic minerals to tissue sites. So you need to have some substance that's ready to pick up the organic minerals and take them to the tissues where they are needed. Very, very important. Basically, all of the minerals found in spring water, and especially well water, are indigestible by the body. Unless specific amino acids or other bodily catalysts are present in the water, the all-important process of bodily absorption is not conducted. This leaves the lime, dead minerals, and salts to float throughout the body, clogging arteries, kidneys, joints, and other digestive organs. There's the principle for you right there. Now, in the human body, the body will never release minerals which are organically bound to body tissues. Your body doesn't say, well, here comes the, the distilled water. Oh, no, whoa, here goes the minerals. <laughs> Bang, out they go. There are tens of thousands of people in the United States, well, throughout North America, receiving kidney dialysis two to three times a week. What kind of water do they use for kidney dialysis? Distilled water. Why is it those people don't have a mineral deficiency? It's because the distilled water is not going to pull any organically bound minerals from the body, living minerals. Secondly here, I like the structure of that man. <laughs> Needs a little bit of skin, but other than that, <laughs> 
The body will only discard minerals which it does not need or that it does not recognize as being organic. And there's so many uh, reports, you know, this way and that way. How do you know what to believe? So I looked at the work of someone who's done all the research I was about to do. And this man investigated all these reports. It's reporter Randy Johnson, an investigative reporter. So he put this together because a doctor, Zoltan Rona, put out a um, paper called Early Death Comes with Regular Drinking of Distilled Water. So Randy Johnson challenged him and said, really, where's the data that supports such a claim? Okay, early death comes from drinking <laughs> distilled water. He says about Dr. Rona, he provides no experimental evidence or references to studies that would support various statements in the paper. And you have to say to yourself, where do these claims come from? Where are they coming from? The other primary source of the distilled water is harmful myth is chapter 12 of a report Nutrients in Drinking Water, published by the World Health Organization. Now this is interesting because a good rebuttal to the article was published by the Canadian Water Quality Association, and I discussed some of the other aspects of the paper here. And I put this on here because you can go to Randy Johnson's uh, research yourself and discover all the things he's done, and you can tap right into Zoltan Rona's website, you, or your website, his uh, web address, and you can send him a letter saying, where's the data supporting your claim? you'll find it's not there because reporter Randy, Randy Johnson said he never, ever, ever got a re report back from Dr. Zoltan Rona. He emailed him and asked, where's the support? And he never got something back. So he says, maybe, maybe you can do something about it. He says, on the other hand, he says, I have looked regularly in the scientific literature for good evidence of this alleged phenomenon, that is the distilled water leaching minerals and causing early death. And he says, but without success. There's nothing there to support those claims. How many people in this world know how to study? Not very many. They hear reports from here and there and this doctor and that doctor, and they honestly don't know who to follow. Unless we learn how to discern what is truth and what isn't truth, we're going to be subject to the leadings of these people when really you've got to learn how to just check out what they're saying. Don't ask someone else to do it for you. Start to do your own research and search out all the claims. One of the best things to do is you can go to papers by PhDs and see who is sponsoring the page, who's sponsoring the research. What you want is unbiased input. That is a major key, unbiased input. So now, Water has many functions in the human body, but its major function is that it acts as a cleansing, healing agent. Notice that? It's an agent, which means it's carrying things in the body. The quantity and quality should be high in organs such as the liver, lungs, and brain, as well as the blood, lymphatic fluid, saliva, and other organs found in the digestive system. And as we look at nature and all these waters, the beautiful thing about water is that water is the only medium which the body uses for various enzymatic and chemical reactions in the body. It moves nutrients, hormones, antibodies, and oxygen through the bloodstream and lymphatic system. The proteins and enzymes in our body function more efficiently in solutions of low viscosity, such as distilled water. Water is the solvent of the body and it regulates all functions including the activity of everything it dissolves and circulates. So how important is it? Extremely. Thousands have died for want of pure water and pure air who might have lived. These blessings they need in order to become well. If they would become enlightened and let medicine alone and accustom themselves to outdoor exercise and to air in their houses summer and winter and use soft water for drinking and bathing purposes, they would be comparatively well and happy instead of dragging out a miserable existence. Pure, soft water, inside, outside, really works well. You know, as you look at nature, rain and mist and fog on the ground that's all through the process of distillation. It distills it. So I chose to go with the distillation and see a great benefit. But I wanted to share with you that 
Distilled water is not something Jeannie and I are saying, you've got to have distilled water, there's no other water you should drink. There are other forms of good water out there. And if you can afford them, you could take advantage of them. But God's healing is provided for rich and poor. You don't have to have a distiller in order to get your body well. You can find them, but you don't have to have them. If you couldn't afford a distiller, you could still just drink the water you could, eat the right foods that you need, get exercise, get sunshine, fresh air, and it will take you longer to get well, but you can get there. Does that make sense to you? Okay, so it's, a healing is always within the reach of rich and poor. Always. And believe you me, we need that. Indulging in eating too frequently and in too large quantities overtaxes the digestive organs and produces a feverish state of the system and then diseases of various kinds occur. The sufferers in such cases can do for themselves that which others cannot do as well for them. They should commence to relieve nature of the load they have forced upon her. They should remove the cause, fast, a short time, and give the stomach a chance for rest. That's so important. Reduce the feverish state of the system by a careful and understanding application of water. These efforts will help nature in her struggles to free the system of impurities. Such important statements. And look when they were written. Absolutely brilliant. I just love it. Now, if you have stomach problems, burning stomach, for stomach or digestive problems, it does the body well to fast for three days, taking nothing into your system except distilled water and lots of it. This will give the digestive organs a chance to rest and do some much needed repair work. Now, I've said this to people that have come into the office. When I see someone and they're they're eating five, six meals a day because the doctor said you've got to keep your blood sugars up. And I say, have the doctors worked for you so far? Are you well? No. Well, maybe you need to try something a little different. Are you open for it? Well, of course, that's why they're there in the office. They've heard people get healed coming there and they want to try that healing. So I'll say, I want you to eat nothing and just take distilled water into your system for the next three days. And they go, oh. I'll die. I say, no, you won't. You'll actually live. You know, you think about it. We think that if we're going to fast for one day even and just have nothing but water, what a crime against my desires. How could I do this thing? Remember Jesus, 40 days and 40 nights fasting for us. That's going to tell you how important ruling food is in our lives. If the spotless Son of God spent 40 days and 40 nights overcoming appetite on behalf of men, then what a battle is before the Christian. How many should take a day a week and just say, nothing but water to give the system a rest, the digestive organs a complete rest? Well, these people that have followed my recommendations and just gone three days without water, one woman said she's, she's allergic to just about every kind of food. She was restricted to chicken soup and buns or something like that. And I said, you can't eat any fruit. Oh, bananas do them wrong with me. Avocados, yeah, I can't touch them. I can't eat steak. I can't eat anything but chicken noodle soup and buns. And she says, I have aches in my back. I have aches in my legs. I just, oh, I'm, I'm hungry all the time. I'm tired all the time. I've got mucus problems. I've got constipation. I said, Three days, just water. And she says, oh, I, I don't know if I can do this. Oh, I, don't, I can't do this. I said, try it. Take it a glass at a time. Oh, one more glass of water. One more glass. This woman phoned up. She said, I did the three days. I said, how do you feel? She said, I feel fantastic. I said, what did you do this morning? She said, for breakfast, I had avocado and toast and a banana and a bowl of cereal. I said, how do you feel? She said, fantastic. Meanwhile, she has been, so many, been to so many allergists, and you've got this problem, this, 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 this. I said, you're super dehydrated. Your system is overworked. You've eaten too much of the wrong kind of food too often, and now you're suffering. What nature needs is a rest. 
Does that sound simple? She didn't die. Imagine that. All the pains in her back disappeared. The pains in her knees disappeared. Her constipation disappeared. Imagine that. Just like it is so simple. Wow. Now here's a statement. We get a lot of people that, that phone in and ask, what can I do? What can I do? Well, Jeannie talked with this one young woman. And this woman, she had been to many doctors. She said, I want to thank you both. Years and decades with doctors and no one could give me reasons for my migraines. Lots of prescriptions and no relief. I was having four clinically diagnosed migraines per week. After talking to you, Jeannie, I barely get migraines anymore. Something so simple. And all the doctors, specialists, and hospitals couldn't figure it out. Thank you for giving me my life back. My children have a mother again. You know what Jeannie told her? Water. Water. So simple. So simple. We have a duty to speak, to come out against intemperance of every kind. Intemperance in working, in eating, in drinking, and in drugging. And then point them to God's great medicine. Water. Pure, soft water. For diseases, for health, for cleanliness, and for a luxury. In the time of Ellen White, do you know what they called pure soft water? Rainwater. Rainwater. Isn't that interesting? They didn't have distillers, but nature was doing the distilling, and this rainwater that would run down, you know, and they put it in a barrel, this was called soft water. And it's beautiful. And so I base my choices on seeing what God did in nature, and I say, must be the best. The maker made it. And he says, here, child, drink. This is what you need. And the astounding results Jeannie and I have seen with people are truly amazing by doing something so simple as add water. Thank you.